Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 9 for April the 30th, 2017. We're still in Unit 2, entitled God's Caring, Saving, and Upholding Love. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is True Love. Our devotional reading comes out of Matthew uh, chapter 18 verses 1 through 5 and verses 10 through 14. A background scripture, John chapter 10 verses 1 through 15. And our print passage also is John chapter 10 verses 1 through uh, 15. Our key verse reads, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. As taken from John chapter 10 verses 14 and 15 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore the metaphor of Jesus as the Good Shepherd who opens the gate for the sheep. Number two, affirm the love of God expressed in the life and ministry of Jesus the Good Shepherd. And three, respond to God's uh, persevering love by loving others. We have three outlines today that we will be discussing. The first outline is entitled, Christ is the Door. Our second outline is entitled, Christ is the Good Shepherd. And then our third outline is entitled, Christ the sacrificial shepherd. We certainly thank and praise God for this opportunity yet again to uh, come to you um, with our Sunday school lesson. And we hope that uh, you will follow us today as we will share some scripture with you with you concerning uh, this parable, uh, this metaphor that Jesus used in uh, John chapter 10, one that we are very familiar with. Um, and I'm sure that many of you have uh, studied yourselves. I want to read a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson uh, from our uh, lesson quarterly and then I want to make a few points from uh, our lesson standard, um, some background if you will. Uh, in John chapter 10 verses 1 through 15 Jesus set forth a parable in which he presented the Good Shepherd and the door. Since the occupation of shepherding was woven into the fabric of Judean custom and culture, it should have been easy for his listeners to understand his employed metaphor. And from our lesson uh, standard, uh, our text from the middle of John's Gospel records part of a series of conflict episodes between Jesus and his opponents. Important for context is the account of Jesus healing of a man born blind that's in John chapter 9 which occurs just before today's text. Uh, the healed man was confronted by religious leaders who were opposed to Jesus but their opposition made the healed man all the more certain that Jesus had been sent by God. The infuriated leaders threw the man out, effectively claiming that he had uh, that they had cut him off from fellowship with God's people. Subsequently, Jesus identified himself to the man as the one God had sent. So we want to stop right there, but we want to get some context um, uh, from John chapter ten. We certainly uh, want to be able to go back to John chapter nine. Uh, to see the story uh, concerning 
uh, the healing of the blind man. Uh, I believe that was Jesus' uh, sixth miracle that he performed according to John's Gospel. And if you really wanted to be technical, we could go back to uh, John chapter 7. Um, Jesus entering, uh, visiting Jerusalem um, during the Feast of uh, Tabernacles. And um, so many of the events that occurred um, from John chapter uh, 7 through John chapter 10 um, sets forth uh, some of the um, uh, the issues if you will uh, that involve Jesus uh, ministry and so we want to be able to get into this lesson today uh, and I want you to keep in mind that this is a metaphor this is a parable uh, and so what is a parable uh, these are stories, especially those of Jesus told to provision of life, uh, especially life uh, in God's kingdom. So uh, putting alongside for the purposes of comparison and new understanding. So we want to be able to get the spiritual application uh, for this physical uh, metaphor that uh, Jesus gave. Uh, and so what I would like to do very quickly is just to give you two scriptures that uh, if you don't take anything else away from this lesson uh, I want you to be able to at least have these two scriptures and it will help identify uh, some of the challenges that Jesus had do during his ministry so I want to go very quickly to John chapter 20 uh, and then I want to go down to verse 31. Uh, John chapter 20, um, verses 31. The Bible says, uh, well, let's go up to verse 30. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing you may have life in his name and then I want to go uh, to Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and in all you're getting, get understanding. I want to give you those two scriptures. Um, these are the struggles, if you will, um, that Jesus um, was uh, dealing with and battling with the Jews and the Pharisees in our lesson today. Uh, he was struggling with them that they might believe who he was who he is and he was also struggling striving with them that they might be able to understand and that was the strategy uh, in this parable uh, he was speaking to people who did not understand but he was trying to help them understand by telling them a story John chapter 10 uh, verses 1 through 6 our first outline Christ is the door and I want to read this from the NIV translation uh, very truly I tell you Pharisees anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out verse 4 uh, when he has brought all, brought out all his own he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice but they will never follow a stranger in fact they will run away from him 
uh, because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. And then verse 6, Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. You know, the ministry, uh, if we can look at this lesson in a broader context, ministry is a very difficult um, endeavor, uh, business if you will, if I can use that term struggling with individuals that they might believe the gospel that we preach and that we are presenting it in a way that uh, the people understand. If you go back in John chapter 9 after Jesus healed this blind man uh, that was an investigation uh, conducted by the Pharisees by the Jews into um, who healed this man um, uh, who his parents was uh, the list goes on and on um, this blind man was interrogated he was verbally abused because the individuals um, surrounding him did not believe Jesus told this story to the Pharisees to help them understand uh, the purposes by which uh, he came. But if we're looking at this parable and we know that Jesus is telling a story here, then what is the spiritual implications of this uh, lesson? Uh, we know, um, as the outline tells us, that uh, the task of being a shepherd involves long hours and an enormous uh, amount of work. In addition to leading the flocks to grazing pastures and fresh water sources, shepherds are tasked with the responsibilities of, of protecting the sheep from hurt, harm, and danger. So uh, this sheep pen or the sheep fold was a physical structure uh, with a high fence uh, with stakes um, uh, that supported this fence to help keep these uh, uh, sheep in the place that they uh, would be protected. Uh, but what is the spiritual place um, that Jesus is talking about here? And so Judaism, uh, if we understand uh, the law, uh, the tradition, the way of life. We won't have time to go over there today, but I want you to look at Galatians chapter 1, uh, verses uh, uh, 13 and 14. Um, and so, but these individuals, the Pharisees and, and the Jews, these individuals uh, were living their lives uh, uh, in a certain way according to the law. Uh, and so they were trying to, uh, at least according to the law, to justify themselves uh, to keeping the law that, that, that somehow uh, uh, if they would do this, that this would somehow earn them uh, their way, if you will. But we understand that uh, Jesus entered into ministry through prophecy. It was prophesied that he would be the Messiah. So he entered into Judaism through the Messianic line. We, we have all of this account. Uh, certainly if we went to Matthew chapter 1, we could see uh, his lineage. So he came into or to his own people uh, through prophecy, through the way that it had been uh, prophesied that he would come. And so everyone else that did not come through uh, the, the, the accurate testimony of God, these individuals uh, were considered uh, thieves. And so uh, verse 2 says, The one who enters uh, by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. And that's what we meant. Uh, earlier, So Jesus had come through uh, the correct uh, lineage. He had come through prophecy. I want to go to John chapter 1 so we can get some perspective about this. John chapter 1 uh, verses 
Uh, let's go down to verse uh, 29. Uh, the Bible says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Uh, this is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. Uh, I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. Verse 32 says, uh, And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Up, up, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. And so if we were to go back over to John chapter 1 and we look at verse uh, uh, 10, the Bible says uh, he was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. Uh, verse 11, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Uh, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Uh, verse 13, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So we get some perspective here uh, that Jesus is the shepherd, is the good shepherd. He came in uh, uh, the righteous way uh, through God sending him. And so the Holy Spirit had uh, opened up this ministry, if you will, uh, 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 to Israel that they might be saved. So Jesus is telling uh, this parable here to help uh, the Pharisees understand uh, who he is, who he was, and what he came to do. And so he goes on to say in verse 5 back in our lesson text from John chapter 10 talking about his followers uh, they will n uh, never follow a stranger in fact they will run away because they do not recognize a stranger's voice and so Jesus used this figure of speech and so uh, but the Pharisees did not understand uh, what he was saying the Pharisees did not have uh, the the children of Israel uh, or the Jews best interests at heart and so uh, as it goes on to say here that those who heard the Lord use this illustration did not understand its meaning hence non-spiritual people cannot understand the things of God because they are spiritually discerning and so if you look at verse uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 we can understand uh, uh, that uh, the natural man cannot accept these things uh, but we want to be able to appreciate the fact that uh, uh, Jesus was dealing with unbelief uh, Jesus was dealing with people who had rejected his teachings who had rejected his mission uh, uh, who had rejected uh, his miracles, who did not uh, believe he was authentic. Uh, and so they questioned him. The Pharisees, uh, instead of glorifying God for this man's, uh, this blind man's uh, healing, uh, they interrogated him and they began to question uh, uh, who he was and and all of these various things but sometimes that happens even today when the Lord blesses us when the Lord gives us something when he does something in our lives and we testify to those things then sometimes people will not accept us they will not believe that we have been blessed of God and that is what happened uh, to this blind man but I want to help us understand that uh, uh, we have to be careful about strange doctrines. Uh, if, if we had a little time and you, you, you could read the uh, entire Sermon on the Mount uh, back over in Matthew chapter 5 through, ver uh, through uh, chapter 7. Uh, there was an exchange over there where Jesus was teaching about they say but I say. 
and so uh, we have that account today that a lot of people who are saying things of themselves who are teaching their interpretations uh, 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 but they are not giving us the accurate interpretation and so this is the basis here uh, of what Jesus is telling uh, these uh, uh, Pharisees here uh, but they do not understand. When you have a little time, uh, I want you to read Hebrews chapter 3, uh, verses 16 through 19, and Hebrews chapter 4, verses one, uh, 1 and 2. And so when we don't believe the gospel, then we are locked out of understanding the gospel. Uh, 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 we are locked out of appreciating uh, what the gospel could do in our lives because we don't apply or don't mix faith with what we hear from the gospel so uh, it, it's not the fact that uh, the Pharisees did not know the law uh, but they didn't believe on Jesus they didn't believe they didn't mix uh, uh, faith with what he was telling them and so they rejected him and so this is a very important lesson for us today because it is still active in our culture today that men are misleading people men are misleading the followers and so we have to be careful here about strange doctrines uh, when I read that term I immediately thought about the first epistle of John chapter 4 verses 1 through 3 you can read that when you have time and so the question is asked here in the quarterly what are some practical lessons that church leaders can learn from the shepherds of Palestine and from the model of the master and so uh, it, we need to be genuine with people we need to be uh, genuinely concerned uh, for God's people. I want to give you some scriptures a little bit later on to address this uh, and we ought to be genuine uh, to the extent with God's people that we tell them the truth. Uh, if people are going to get saved uh, and, and we want people to be saved we must tell people the truth. We must preach the gospel accurately. We must rightly divide the word of truth so men can hear the gospel and they can believe the gospel and then they can call on the on on Jesus who who can save them and so that is a very important question for us to be able to answer and that was the issue in Jesus day there was a lot of false teachers uh, uh, false prophets who were uh, 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 teaching the people and leading the people astray and so uh, uh, not interpreting the law uh, uh, accurately and so the law Jesus didn't come to destroy the law but he came rather to fulfill the law so our second outline is entitled Christ is the Good Shepherd this is taken from John chapter 10 verses 7 through 10 again from the NIV translation therefore Jesus said again very truly I tell you I am the gate for the sheep all who have come before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep have not listened to them I am the gate he who enters uh, through me will be saved they will come in and go out and find pasture the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it uh, to the full. Let me say something here about uh, verse 7. The Jews did not understand the meaning of the story of the Good Shepherd. Therefore the Lord explained it to them. Uh, you know at the entryway of the sheepfold the shepherd guarded the gate this was the only this was one way of keeping the sheep safe and secure uh, what is more Jesus is our gate uh, he is the believers passageway to God and so what we want to be able to understand here and this is a struggle uh, for every preacher every pastor is to make sure that the people of God are indoctrinated with the Word of God so they can have a defense 
uh, for other doctrines that are uh, in our environment. What Jesus says is very important because this is what we live by. This is what we go by. Uh, uh, and so we recognize his teachings uh, and, 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 and we recognize the context of the gospel. This is the spiritual uh, 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 component of this parable, if you will. We want to look at this uh, in broader context because uh, we have, uh, we, we're not uh, quote unquote physically walking with Jesus. Uh, uh, but we are spiritually walking with him and we are spiritually walking with what he has told us, what he has taught us through his word. And this is how we are able to move about. This is how we're able to come and go. And, and even though there are other things going on around us, we are still able to understand that this is either what Jesus said or this is not what Jesus said. And so this is what we have to be able to understand that all who have come before me, Jesus says, they are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. And that's very important because our ears are very important to us in any culture. And so what we and who we give our attention to or who we listen to uh, uh, can direct us or influence us in the way that we live uh, and, 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 and we may die uh, if we are saved or, or, or we are not saved but uh, uh, and so we have to be careful about who we entrust our ears to and that's very important in this lesson and so Jesus says and this is one of the uh, the great I am's of, 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 of this lesson I am the gate whoever enters through me will be saved so if you have been saved through the gospel you should understand the gospel and you should be seeking to understand more of the gospel and so we have to be careful about uh, other doctrines and other things that people are teaching us uh, and, uh, and this is a, a, a issue uh, it was in the early church uh, my mind just uh, uh, the Spirit of the Lord just reminded me of of of, of uh, Acts chapter 15. Uh, you can read that at your leisure. That at that time there were uh, men teaching that uh, you couldn't be saved un unless you were circumcised. And we have other issues today that we're telling people that they cannot be saved unless. And and a lot of it doesn't have anything to do with faith. It has to do with some justification by some work. And that was the issue of the law in Judaism. That men were seeking to justify themselves by what they did. But, but we have to understand that uh, Galatians chapter 3 uh, uh, helps us understand that we cannot justify ourselves by any works that we can do. Uh, we are justified by faith and that's what the Jews, that's what the Pharisees did not understand. And so we are able, as Jesus says here, they will come in and go out and find pasture. And so we are able to move about and we are able to still be nourished on the words of God. Uh, but the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And that's very significant today. And there's a lot of doctrines uh, that are doing that to people even today. Um, they're stealing uh, our hope and aspiration. They're stealing our finance, this, finances. They're stealing our uh, 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 all the substances of our lives they they are killing our influence they're killing our lives we are not able to go forward and, and and very destructive but Jesus said I have come that we might have life you know that we might have eternal life that we might have abundant life that we might have a full life a life full of joy a life full of of, of peace and, and uh, Galatians chapter 5 will tell us that there is there's fruit of, of our uh, connection uh, through Jesus Christ fruit that comes through the Holy Spirit but but referring to all other sages and systems before him Jesus said that they were vicious thieves 
uh, and robbers. In reality, the true sheep did not even listen to the imposters. Let me ask you a question. How do you determine if someone is telling you the truth or they are not? What gospel do you know enough gospel to defend yourself? Do you know enough context of the gospel to defend yourself? Are you able to uh, determine between good and evil? These are valuable questions that we need to have answered. And this is the struggle, as I said earlier, of all of the pastors, those that are sent of God and, and those who are teaching and preaching the word of God is to uh, uh, to arm people uh, when you're attending Sunday school and Bible class and other educational opportunities one of the reasons we are doing this is to arm you is to encourage you is to fortify you to strengthen you because we know that there are other things being taught we know that there are other doctrines out here we know that there are people deceiving others and we don't want that for you we don't want you to be deceived we don't want you to be led astray so we are striving we are struggling uh, as Paul says in Colossians I believe uh, chapter 2 he is struggling mightily uh, with the spirit of God to make sure that the people of God are armed uh, uh, and so we are not led astray and that's what the gospel that's what Jesus came to do when this blind man was healed in chapter 9 of John's gospel and the Jews the Pharisees could not understand and did not accept it they cast this man out and so uh, but he later on if you follow the text uh, he worshiped Jesus as the son of God and so and this is what Jesus came to do to Israel is to save them from the curse of the law of trying to justify themselves because if you understand the the Mosaic law and if you understand the traditions if you break one law you have broken the whole law you will never be able to keep the Jews the Pharisees uh, whoever these individuals are Israel and we're going to share something with you in just a second from the 10th chapter of the book of Romans but you will never be able to keep yourself you will never be able to justify yourself according to the law but I want to go very quickly to Romans chapter 10 and this is Paul talking about the plight of Israel um, Romans chapter 10 verse 1 Paul says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves uh, have not submitted to the righteousness of God verse 4 for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes you see that Paul was concerned about Israel if you if you go over into Galatians I believe I gave you that uh, chapter 1 this was the same issue with Paul he was following the traditions he was following the law he was uh, zealous for the law and he was persecuting the church uh, of God he was persecuting the saints of God because of his tradition so in other words he did not understand the law as he should have understood the law uh, he thought the law uh, and the purposes of the law was for him to do what he was doing and how he was treating other people but he met the Lord Jesus on that Damascus road and that changed the course of his life but he is concerned in Romans chapter 10 because Israel is the same way he was 
They're following traditions. They're trying to do it their way, establish their own righteousness, and not submitting themselves to the righteousness of God. So this is what Jesus came to do, is to save his people from t- from trying to do things on their own to justify themselves and working this thing out. Jesus came that men might believe. That's very important. That's a lot easier than working for it. To believe. Just believe. Uh, just believe who Jesus is. Just believe the gospel and, 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 and be saved. But, but Paul says here they wanted to do it on their own. They wanted to establish uh, themselves. Uh, they wanted to sort of uh, uh, do it in in out of their own understanding and, and 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 out of their own wisdom if you will but paul says here they were ignorant they didn't understand the righteousness of god they didn't know the requirements uh, of salvation they did not accept the requirements of salvation so that's very important for us to understand but back in our lesson text the question is asked the shepherd lay at the door the gate of the sheepfold at night to keep his sheep from leaving the fold and risk getting lost or worse. What were some other reasons for why the shepherd lay at the entrance? As we study this lesson, uh, we are uh, we came up on First Peter chapter five, and we're going to uh, answer this question uh, biblically. Because, again, we want to do our best to arm the people of God. Uh, and this is what Jesus is telling us to do, uh, that we might be protected uh, against all of these other things that, that are going on in our environment. Uh, uh, but First Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, the Bible says, The elders who are among you I exhort. I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you serving as overseers not by compulsion but willingly not for dishonest gain but eagerly nor as being lords over those entrusted to you but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Jesus protects us. His word protects us. His instructions keep us in this life. We have to have the teachings of Jesus Christ. We must allow him in the 15th chapter of John's gospel Jesus says if you abide in me and my words abide in you we have to abide we have to stay uh, 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 under the direction of the Holy Spirit of the doctrine of Jesus Christ this is one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit is given to us to remind us and to continue the ministry spiritually of Jesus Christ in our everyday life. We will not be able to uh, go and do and be protected if we do not follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. This is why we continue to go back to the house of the Lord. This is why we continue to go back to Sunday school, to Bible class and other uh, educational opportunities uh, of our churches is to get more to 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 learn more that we might be able to to handle uh this age that we are living in so it's very important that uh as this question asks uh the shepherd uh lay at the door uh to keep uh, at night to keep his sheep from leaving the fold and risk loss or worse Sometimes when we get away from the gospel, we injure ourselves. We injure 
our walk with the Lord, when we stop obeying the Lord, we get into trouble. And some have lost their lives disobeying God. So the Holy Spirit is there to direct us and to lead us and to guide us, as John chapter 16 tells us, in all paths of truth. Don't forget that. And then our last outline is Christ, the, the sacrificial shepherd. This is taken from uh, John chapter 10, verses 11 through 15. The Bible says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. Verse 13. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. What do we get from Jesus dying on the cross? What do we learn from that event? What do we learn that Jesus shed his blood? Do we get, do we understand that he loves us? He paid that price for our sins. Doesn't John chapter 3 tell us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son? Don't we understand the motive of Christ? sacrificial death but some of the leaders and we see this all the time some of our leaders are not concerned about the sheep at all they are not concerned about the welfare of the sheep I don't know why this was such a difficult parable for them to understand they didn't care anything about uh, 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 the, the, the people that they were over Uh, and so if you look at the blind man in John chapter 9 again he didn't do anything wrong he was healed yet he was cast out he was blind he was made well what did he do that caused him to be verbally abused he was not embraced he was not encouraged Uh, no one uh, uh, that I read thank God for his healing But this man went through an ordeal because God healed him. So nobody really cared about his welfare. They cast him out not caring what happened to him. But this is what happens when these hired hands, these individuals that are not sent of God, these individuals who don't care about the flock, uh, when they see the trouble uh, in the land, when they see other doctrines, that uh, that 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 could affect the flock. They don't warn the 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 flock. They don't educate the flock. They don't uh uh, uh look after the flock. Uh, we don't even check on individuals of our own congregations. And so these are very uh, condemning words. Uh, not only in Jesus' day, but in our day, we have individuals who are taking advantage. Uh, look at verse 13. The hired hand, the, the man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. That is a sad commentary. But Jesus says again, I am the good shepherd. You know, and I, 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 I just love the Lord because of his faithfulness. I love the Lord because he is attentive. I love the Lord because he neither slumbers nor sleeps. His eye is in every place beholding the evil and the good. The uh, You know, in John chapter 14, Jesus was comforting his disciples. Part of the upper room discourse. Let not your heart be troubled. You know the story. But he said, I won't leave you as orphans. I won't leave you. I won't abandon you. You know, but I will come to you. I'm promising you that if I go away, I will come again. You know, he was reassuring that his disciples were upset. 
and he was reassuring them and he was encouraging them because he cares because he loves us and we ought to be able to see that in this text today Jesus entered in to this world he came to his own he came to his own people he came to his own creation and look what he got for it he got a crucifixion but he had to get that crucifixion because the purpose that he came for was not for himself but for someone else but for you and for me he didn't commit any sin but we did and he came to pay that debt he came to pay that price and he paid that price and you and I are the recipients of his healing you and I are the recipients of the miracle just like the blind man if you will don't you know there was a time we couldn't see we were just as blind as that blind man in chapter 9 but thank God I can see thank God I understand thank God I can realize that I needed to be saved thank God for the miracle of faith to be able to believe thank God and this is what the message the lesson is telling us today and so Jesus says in in verse 14 I know my sheep and my sheep know me I know his word I am very well acquainted and this is what we are doing and and trying to do more of is to get more acquainted with the teachings of Jesus get more acquainted with the Spirit of God and we are learning more and more each and every day we are in a relationship with Jesus Christ that's what Jesus that's what Jesus is saying here uh, I, I, I know my sheep and my sheep know me so I'm not gonna follow some stranger who doesn't care who is not teaching me what thus says the Lord I cannot follow that I have to listen to what Jesus is telling me because that's the gospel that I was saved by and I understand that and that's what we want to take away from this passage but the shepherd had enormous and countless responsibilities such as scouting for grazing and water supplies defending the flock from vicious devouring predators and even protecting the flock from other predators in the form of humans called hirelings. The false shepherd had no real investment in the sheep. Hence, they were on the job strictly for the paycheck. Need I say anything more? Do we see that in, the, in, in our culture today? People are in it for the wrong reasons. People are in it to get as much as they can for themselves and they don't care what they say they don't care how they do individuals and they leave you to fend for yourselves while they live off the good of the land off the sweat and 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 hard labor of others so this is something we need to address uh, each and every day uh, because it's 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 only getting worse men and women are becoming more and more crafty uh, in terms of deceiving people more and more deceitful more and more schemes that we have to dissect and determine if these individuals are of God or not because they want to take advantage of the fact that we don't study we don't carry a Bible we don't pray we don't understand people will take advantage of your ignorance of the Bible and we need to understand that today we need to take responsibility for our learning and take responsibility uh, for our education take responsibility for our prayer lives take responsibility uh, uh, for our spiritual welfare we must do that today or you will be taken advantage of you will be deceived and you will subsequently be destroyed so this is very clear to me however with respect to hirelings when obvious danger or crisis emerges 
the hirelings display their uncaring behavior by becoming conspicuously absent, thus leaving the animals to fend for themselves. This is, this is very eye-opening to me. But I want us to understand today that Christ has exemplified the characteristics of a good shepherd and a true savior, one that loves to the end. But we have to understand these things that they are not just uh, things that were happening in Jesus' day. They are happening every day. But I was reminded very quickly, I want to go to uh, John chapter 13. Um, When I was thinking about uh, Jesus and how he stayed with his disciples. I want you to turn with me to John chapter 13 verse 1. We're going to read just one verse. Now before the feast of the Passover when Jesus knew that his hour had come that he should depart from this world to the Father having loved his own who were with him who were who were in the world listen at this he loved them to the end that is something that Christ will do has done continues to show forth in our lives his disciples he knew he had to leave but he kept on loving them right to the very end he didn't stop loving them after he left because the Holy Spirit came who would continue on with them in the spirit though Jesus had to depart in the flesh let us remember these scriptures today the question is asked here in the quarterly what makes a hired hand a possibly untrustworthy person. Well, we can look at the characteristics. We can tell, we should be able to tell when someone cares about us. What are their traits? Are they faithful? Are they absent? Not attentive? And then we can compare that to Philippians chapter 2. How Jesus told us Paul said these words don't do anything from selfish ambition all of us need to take a look at ourselves to make sure that we have concern we have love true love for our brothers and sisters I don't know how we can sleep at night having taken advantage of people and caused them harm all in the name of Jesus Christ lied to them stripped them of their resources that we might get ahead of them and call ourselves blessed in the name of Jesus how do we how do we live with that taking the gospel and using it for ungodly purposes believing that uh, uh, that that great wealth you know somehow will gain us Uh, more privileged than someone else that we have taken the gospel out of context in order to hurt others these are things that we have to think about today and I, I, I will stop there I will say and could say more because I have seen these things and I hear these things uh as you do time and time again but it was a struggle in Jesus day of trying to get individuals to believe and to understand that he is the Christ the son of the living God our closing prayer gracious heavenly father we give thanks for your divine protection and guidance you watch over us as our sovereign shepherd and savior please forgive us for our blunders please continue to protect us from hurt harm and danger we love you and need you in our everyday living In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.